VIII is most famous for the fact he had six wives. However, he was a man who was incredibly savage and brutal also. He ordered the executions of some of his closest friends, such as Thomas Cromwell, and could turn on people very quickly. However, one of the most tragic moments of his reign occurred when his second wife, Anne Boleyn, made the short walk to the scaffold inside the Tower of London. Anne had been sentenced to death for incest, treason and adultery, and a French swordsman was fetched to take her head from her shoulders. Henry VIII had tasked Cromwell with plotting her downfall, as he became infatuated with Jane Seymour, one of Anne's ladies-in-waiting, and it's believed the king saw Jane as a woman who could provide him with the son he greatly wished for. But Anne was cast aside. However, during her time inside the tower, it's believed that she sent the king a final letter weeks before she lost her head, which communicated her feelings inside of the tower. This is a poignant last message to her former husband, lover and the man who believed she would spend the rest of her life with. Anne Boleyn is considered a victim of Henry VIII and Thomas Cromwell, and along with her five other men, including her brother, was sentenced to death. These were executed on Tower Hill, but on the 2nd of May 1536, Anne Boleyn was arrested. Miscarriages and the fact she did not give Henry VIII a son meant that she fell from grace. Anne herself was a controversial figure in Tudor society, and many women regarded her as a homewrecker. It was believed by some that when she was taken to the Tower of London, she may have passed through Traitor's Gate the infamous entrance from the Thames where many who were accused of treason were brought, but it's more likely that she entered via the Bywood Tower, having come off the barge via the Queen's Steps, which are there. When she arrived at the Tower, she collapsed and demanded to know where her father and her brother were, and also what she was accused of. She had not been tried, but instead was just seized and arrested. The place where she had spent some time awaiting her coronation soon became her site of imprisonment, and it would later become her place of death. On the 6th of May 1536, four days after she arrived at the Tower, it's claimed that she wrote a final letter to her husband, King Henry VIII. In this it shows how she is feeling, and how she wants to prove her innocence over any charges, and return to her position by the King's side. She wrote, Sir, your grace's displeasure and my imprisonment are things so strange unto me as what to write or what to excuse, I am altogether ignorant. Whereas you send unto me, willing me to confess a truth, and so obtain your favour by such an one whom you know to be my ancient professed enemy, I no sooner received this message by him than I rightly convinced your meaning and if, as you say, confessing a truth indeed may procure my safety, I shall with all willingness and duty perform your demand. But let not your grace ever imagine that your poor wife will ever be brought to acknowledge a fault when not so much as a thought thereof proceeded, and to speak truth, never prince had wife more loyal in all duty and in all true affection than you have ever found in Anne Boleyn, with which name and place, I could willingly have contended myself, if God and your grace's pleasure had been so pleased. Neither did I at any time so far forget myself in my exalteration or received queenship, but that I always looked for an alteration, as I now find, for the ground of my preferment being, on no surer foundation than your grace's fancy. The least alteration I knew was fit and sufficient to draw that fancy to some other object. You have chosen me, from a low estate, to be your queen and companion, far beyond my desert or desire. If then you found me worthy of such honour, good your grace let not any light fancy or bad counsel of mine's enemies. Withdraw your princely favour from me, neither let that strain, that unworthy stain of a disloyal heart towards your good grace. Ever cast so foul a blot on your most dutiful wife, and the infant princess your daughter. Try me, good king, but let me have a lawful trial, and let not my sworn enemies sit as my accusers and judges. Ye let me receive an open trial for my truth, shall fear no open flame, then shall you see either my innocence cleared, your suspicion and conscience satisfied. 
the anogamy and slander of the world stopped, and my guilt openly declared. So that whatever God or your many determine of me, your grace may be freed of an open censor, and mine of sense being so lawfully proved, your grace is at liberty, both before God and man, not only to execute worthy punishment on me as an unlawful wife, but to follow your affection, already settled on that party, for whose sake I am now as I am, whose name I could some good while since have pointed unto, your grace being not ignorant of my suspicion therein, but if you have already determined of me, and that not only my death, but an infamous slander, must bring you the enjoying of your desired happiness, then I desire of God that he will pardon your great sin therein, and likewise mine enemies, the instruments thereof, and that he will not call you to strict account of your unprincely and cruel usage of me at his general judgment seat, where both you and myself must shortly appear, and in those whose judgment I doubt not whatsoever the world may think of me, mine innocence shall be openly known and sufficiently cleared. My last and only request shall be that myself may only bear the burden of your grace's displeasure, and that it may not touch the innocent soul of those poor gentlemen, whose, as I understand, are likewise in straight imprisonment for my sake. If ever I found favour in your sight, if ever the name of Anne Brulin hath been pleasing in your ears, then let me obtain this request, and I will so leave to trouble your grace any further, with mine earnest prayers to the Trinity to have your grace in his good keeping, and to direct you in all your actions, from my doleful prison in the Tower, this 6th of May, your most loyal and ever faithful wife, Anne Boleyn. But Anne Boleyn would never hear from her husband again. Henry would not write back, and it's presumed he was too busy at this time with Jane Seymour, who later became wife number three. On the 15th of May, three days after, four men accused with her were tried, Anne and her brother George were tried separately at the Tower of London in front of a jury of 27 peers. Anne was clearly going to die for her alleged crimes, which are now considered lies and seditious untruths. The other men and her brother had been found guilty, and Anne was also found guilty. Her marriage was declared null and void, and she was condemned to die. On the morning of her execution, the constable of the tower, who was responsible for her imprisonment and subsequent execution, said she was happy and came to terms with her death. He wrote that, This morning she sent for me, that I might be with her at such time as she received the good Lord, to the intent I should hear her speak, as touching her innocency always to be clear. And in the writing of this she sent for me, and at my coming she said, Mr. Kingston, I hear I shall not die afore noon, and I am very sorry therefore, for I thought to be dead by this time and past my pain. I told her it should be no pain, it was so little, and then she said, I heard say the executioner was very good, and I have a little neck, and it then put her hands around it, laughing heartily. I have seen many men and also women executed, and that they have been in great sorrow, and to my knowledge this lady has much joy in death. Sir, her, Alamona, is continually with her, and had been since two o'clock after midnight. With one swing of the sword, Anne Boleyn's head was struck off to the shop of the crowd there, but what is captivating is her last letter, and the desperate heartbreak she must have suffered writing it. She continued in it to refer to her husband as your grace, showing the respect she had, and she wished to have a fair trial to clear her name. But Anne Boleyn did not get this. Today she is considered a victim of the King and Cromwell, and a woman who should never have been killed, as she committed no crimes. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.